Suge Knight is the most feared dude in rap history. His death row record label dominated the game back in the 90s, and he's been tied to more violence and death in the industry than anyone else. Most rap fans have heard the theories about him getting Tupac and Biggie killed, but a lot of people don't realize that Suge might have actually killed Eazy-E. So today, we're breaking down the story and taking a deep look into whether or not Suge Knight murdered the godfather of gangster rap, Eazy-E. In 2003, Suge Knight went on Jimmy Kimmel Live and did one of the most shocking interviews in rap history. Suge already had a violent reputation, and Kimmel wore a bulletproof vest for the interview as a joke. But according to Suge, you don't need bullets to kill people. He said, Technology is so high, right? Right. So if you shoot somebody, you go to jail forever. Some kids, you don't want to go to jail forever, right? right? So they got this new thing out that people sell them all the time. They got this stuff to call, they get blood from somebody with AIDS. Yeah. And then they shoot you with it. Oh, so well, that seems happen, bad. That's yeah. a slow death. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That easy thing, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. Oh, yeah. Rumors have been flying about Suge being involved with Easy's death for years, and it seemed like Suge snitched on himself on national TV. Saying something like that in front of millions of people is wild, but for a long time, Suge was pretty much untouchable. He got hit with charges here and there, but nothing ever stuck, and he always bounced back. The situation between Easy e and Suge started back when NWA was starting to split up. Dr. Dre sent Suge to check out Easy's finances because he thought NWA's manager, Jerry Heller, was only taking care of Easy and leaving everyone else in the crew hanging. And what happened next changed the rap game forever. Dre and the DOC wanted out of their contracts with Easy's Ruthless record label, but Easy wouldn't release them, and that's when Suge got involved. He rode up on Easy at a recording studio and pressed him about the contracts. At first, Easy refused. Then Suge told him he already kidnapped Jerry Heller and was holding him in a van. Easy still didn't want to sign the releases, so Suge and his goons threatened him with bats and metal pipes. To top it off, Suge pulled out a piece of paper with Easy's mom's address on it and told him, I know where your mama stays. Easy knew Suge was serious, so he signed the releases and NWA was officially over. Dre and Suge went on to create Death Row Records, which became the most powerful label in rap history. Dre, Snoop, and Tupac dominated the charts, while Suge used brutal violence to keep the business on top. According to Heller, Easy wanted to take Suge out after it all went down. Heller says he stopped him, but ended up regretting the decision and wishes he let Easy do the world a favor by killing Suge back then. Dre and Easy had a major falling out, and on Dr. Dre's album The Chronic, he and Snoop took a ton of shots at Easy E. On the track F with Dre Day, Dre says, The hoods you threw up with, the you grew up with. Don't even respect your ass. That's why it's time for the doctor to check your ass. Used to be my homie, used to be my ace. Now I want to slap the taste out your mouth, make you bow down to the road. Easy might have signed the releases, but he still wasn't afraid of Suge, and he proved that by clapping back with the track Real Motherfucking G's. The whole song is full of savage disses against Dre and Snoop, and Easy called out Dre for following Suge's orders with the line, But to me, you ain't nothing but a b that ain't worth a fool stamp. And at death row, I heard you getting treated like boot camp. Gotta follow your sergeant's directions, or get your ass pumped with the Smith and Wesson. Losing Dre was a huge blow to Ruthless Records, but Easy kept it pushing and ended up signing the legendary Bone Thugs and Harmony. He was working on a solo career too, and it was clear that Easy didn't need NWA. Everything was going well, but then in 1995, it all fell apart in the blink of an eye. In February 1995, Easy went to the hospital with a cough. A couple of weeks later, Easy put out a shocking public statement where he revealed he had been diagnosed with AIDS. Then on March 26, Easy tragically passed away at just 30 years old. Nobody understood what happened. Everyone knew how deadly AIDS was, but it seemed like Easy was fine one day and then died out of nowhere. Bone thugs were around him a lot right up until his death, and they say the whole situation was sketchy. When Angela Yee interviewed them, they said Easy didn't show any signs or symptoms that he was getting worse. Easy's assistant, Charms Henry, said he was smaller because his appetite had decreased, but there were no lesions or dementia. None of the other things you associate with AIDS. I know because I lost an uncle to it last year. A rapper named BG Knockout was cool with Easy and hopped on his track Real Motherfucking G's back in 93. In 2011, he dropped a track called In My Prime where he said, The way my big homie went out, he didn't deserve it. They say he died of AIDS, but Easy was cold murdered. I filtered out all the bullshit and my third iris. Full blown AIDS, but Tamika ain't got the virus. One of the craziest details about Easy E's death is that none of his baby mamas or kids ever tested positive for HIV or AIDS. Easy was known for being a player and allegedly had 11 kids with eight different women, but somehow none of them caught the disease. Jerry Heller told First Fam Radio that something fishy happened to Easy. 
he brought up how much money they had and how Magic Johnson was able to get treatment around the same time. But easy situation went left before anything could be done about it. A rapper named Frost also thinks somebody had Easy taken out. Frost is a legend in the game and was signed to Ruthless Records back in the day. He did an interview for a documentary called Further Record, the story of Latinos in hip hop, and that's when he aired out the whole situation. According to him, Easy got hurt riding ATVs and somebody stuck him with a tainted needle when he went to get acupuncture. He didn't accuse Shook by name, but he said, I don't want to say that name because yeah, it's, it's the a devil's name. name. But, you know, another person in rap, if you know your history of rap, calls him a devil. So if you know your history in rap, or West Coast rap, you'll know who I'm saying. Easy's son, Young Easy, posted a clip of Suge on Kimmel's show and wrote, I've been known my pops was killed. His death never added up to what people have always said. One person close to the situation who doesn't think Suge was involved is Easy's daughter, Ebi. She made a whole documentary about her dad's death. And she said Suge wasn't involved and that people just took the clip from Kimmel and ran with it. Eb also interviewed a doctor named Wilbur Jordan who claims that Easy infected two of his patients with HIV. Easy not passing the virus on to anyone has been a big part of the murder conspiracy. But according to Dr. Jordan, that isn't even true. There's no proof that Easy gave Jordan's patients HIV, but it's definitely worth noting. Eb's mom, Tracy Jernigan, says that she doesn't believe Easy died from AIDS though. Like a lot of people, she thinks everything about his death is suspicious and that him dying so quickly from the virus with no symptoms is sketchy. There's a reason so many people think Suge has something to do with Easy's death. The rap game has had a lot of savage dudes in the industry over the years, but nobody scared people like Suge. Suge was a big dude and even played two NFL games for the LA Rams. Suge was a crazy dude overall and was always ready to use his size or violence to get whatever he wanted. In 87, he was booked on domestic violence charges after he attacked his girlfriend and cut off her ponytail with a knife in the middle of the street. He also caught an attempted murder charge for shooting at a dude while carjacking him. All that happened before he got in the rap game, but after Death Row started, it only got worse. In 95, he pleaded no contest to assaulting two rappers at Death Row, and according to sources close to the situation, there were always beatings going down at the office. One time, Suge caught an employee using a studio phone without permission. So he beat the dude up, pointed the gun at him, and made him drink pee out of a bucket. Suge was also allegedly involved with the death of Tupac. According to rumors, Pac wanted out of death row, and Suge didn't want anyone else to make money off of him. So instead of working out another deal, Suge allegedly had Pac taken out. After Pac died, rumors were flying that Suge was involved, so he allegedly had Biggie murdered as a distraction. There's no concrete evidence to prove that the rumors are true, but tons of people in the industry think Suge has something to do with both murders. And if he was willing to kill his own homie, he wouldn't think twice about killing competition like Easy. Right now, Suge is serving a 28 year sentence after he ran over two dudes and killed one of them when they got into an argument on the set of Straight Outta Compton. Apparently, Suge wasn't a fan of how the movie made him look, so he used his favorite strategy to fix the issue violence. Suge's brutality actually makes some people think he wasn't involved with Easy's death. They think that if Suge wanted to kill Easy, he would have had him shot or beaten to death, not injected with the AIDS virus. Unfortunately, there's no evidence to prove any of the theories, but Suge was definitely capable of taking Easy out. He'll probably never face a trial over it, but he'll probably also never see the outside of prison again. He might not be in there for killing Easy, but karma always comes back around.